I'm Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author. And as you may know, I am totally and completely insane. I like to yell at mice with my shirt off. Yeah! Yeah! Sometimes I like to steal other people's scabs. Ah! Ah! How do I stay so crazy? Cody Lee of Crazy pills. Take one with breakfast, one with lunch, and before you know it, you'll be up on your roof pooping in the chimney. Hold out your stockings. Faggot. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today we see that everyone's favorite cringy author is still salty about Elden Ring and the Resident Evil 4 remake not coming out on the Switch, meaning he is downplaying those two games and all others that aren't coming out on the Switch. And since he can't handle it when a game doesn't come to his beloved Nintendo Switch, he just had to go and make a video about it and you all know me. I can't leave a bad take unchecked. So it was that the minute I saw this video, I knew I had to make a video on it. Hey, since it's the 50th video on the channel anyway, then it needs to be a good one, doesn't it? And since I've been playing Elden Ring quite a bit lately, I figured now was as good a time as any to make this video. Then again, I have another video that I need to be working on in the meantime, covering all the points against emulation and debunking them so I can direct the anti-emulation crowd to it whenever Harmon Smith or somebody else brings it up in their videos, but I digress. Anyways, Harmon is once again coping and seething and you're here to see that, not listen to me ramble, except on the points Harmon so clearly wishes exist. So let's get into it. So after the last 10 years have been kind of interesting because we've seen a lot of like big video game franchises in the, from the 90s and 2000s. The, the ones that fanboys use to weaponize against Nintendo. You know, the Final Fantasies, the Metal Gear Solids, the Mass Effects, the, uh, the Dragon Ages, the... Halos, the, the Gears of War, the, the Fables, the... Countless, 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 like, you know, forgettable, boring, not even mid, like below mid, like subpar, just below average, just pure trash IPs that have been, like, weaponized against Nintendo over the years. Who was weaponizing Final Fantasy against Nintendo, Harmon? You know, Final Fantasy began on the NES, right? Who was weaponizing Metal Gear Solid against Nintendo? It began on the Game Boy Color, you know this, right? So of all those game franchises he just listed, Two of them at least started on Nintendo consoles. Hell, some of them are playable on the Nintendo Switch. Most notably, Final Fantasies 1 through 10 and 12. There are at least three Metal Gear Solid games that are on Nintendo hardware, but oh, as Harmon is above emulation, stating that it is illegal, which it isn't, and I'll prove that in a later video so y'all have that to look forward to. Now, the other game franchises he mentioned, Dragon Age, Halo, Gears of War, Fable, with the exception of Dragon Age, they are all owned by Microsoft, and if Nintendo can have games that are exclusive to its consoles, then why can't Microsoft have games that are exclusive to its consoles? Now, I know he made a video where he states that every game company should be developing for the Nintendo Switch since it's the most popular. Why does he say the Switch is the most popular? Because it has the most sales numbers, of course. Sales numbers don't directly translate into success, something that even Harmon here will say when it goes best with whatever narrative it is he's trying to spin at the time, but whatever. One last thing to say here, where does he dig all the crappy info he gets for these videos? It certainly isn't from trustworthy gaming news sources, although just how many of them are trustworthy, I'll leave up to you. Anyway, I like how he says that all of these games are below mid. I know for a fact that the guy is unhinged, but he's also clearly narcissistic, as he believes his opinion to be the only valid one, apparently. Well, guess what, Harmon? Two can play at that game. So if you're watching this far, let's see how you like it when the tables are turned. Nintendrones have been weaponizing their games against other console manufacturers and gaming fans for years. You know, the painfully below mid, like, not even painfully below mid. They're forgotten about, nobody plays them, and they can't compete with Valve. You know, the Marios, the Zeldas, the Pokemons, I say, as I wear a Pokemon t-shirt, or at least while I type this, the Fire Emblem, the Animal Crossings. They just can't compete with what Valve has to offer. Do you see how easily that can be turned on you, Harmon? It's almost as if there's this thing called subjective opinions. We've seen a lot of these, um, a lot of these franchises just fall off the wayside. They're gone. They're over. They're never coming back. Regardless of how often Microsoft tries to tell us that, like, oh, Perfect Dark is going to be a triple A, a, a quadruple A game. They they legit said that. Uh, you know, Fable is getting produced. Uh, you know, Halo is coming back. Uh, we have Game Pass. Like, a uh, PlayStation has this and this and this and this. Okay, so I'm actually surprised that out of all that gibberish, Harmon actually got one thing right. Microsoft did in fact refer to Perfect Dark as a quadruple-A game instead of triple-A. Who knows why? Anyways, 
I looked, and Fable 4 is currently in development, although it has been two years since the trailers dropped, so while I won't get my hopes up, hell, I forgot about Fable 4 until Harmon started complaining about it, and Halo did come back with Halo Infinite, but since I'm not a Halo fan, and unlike Harmon, I make it a point to not talk about subjects that I have no experience with, that's as far as I can go with it. Also, Harmon, among the three console online feature thingies, as I understand it, Microsoft has the best one, but again, I don't know because even though I have a PS4, I haven't played an Xbox console since the 360 and I don't even go online with that one, or pay the subscription fee rather. So I can't really go into too much detail with it. But before I let Harmon get back to his incessant rambling, I'd also just like to point out how Nintendo has several games that many of the fans want brought back, but Nintendo apparently has no interest in bringing back. Here are just a few games from Nintendo's older libraries that I myself would like to see brought back. Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, Pokemon Coliseum, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, and Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, just to name a few. Before I let Harmon go back to spewing verbal diarrhea, here's a clip just for Harmon. Um, excuse me? Mr. Kettle, Mr. Pot called. He says you're black! Regardless of what these people say, we are in this era where the classic video game IPs, the ones that people use to prove that Nintendo was for kids and that the real consoles, like the, the ones for men were on other platforms, uh, Xbox and PlayStation, all of those franchises have fallen by the wayside. They're gone and they're irrelevant. They can't compete. They're done. So we, we've entered like a weird kind of like transitionary period where people are trying to do everything they possibly can to ref to uh, pretend, continue to pretend that Nintendo has any competition at all. So, of course, like, the most notable example is, of course, From Software and, like, their Dark Souls IP and how, like, people are pretending it had any chance of, like, surpassing Zelda at any point in its relevancy. You know, Dark Souls is the big one, but there are a handful of other ones as well. And I think one of the examples, one of the go-to examples is Devil May Cry, right? Devil May Cry is, of course, a franchise that's been, you know, weaponized against Bayonetta, but I think if we let this go unchecked, like, Devil May Cry will eventually grow to the point where you'll see people making weird comparisons about how it's better than Luigi's Mansion, better than Pikmin, better than like anything else Nintendo makes, better than Astral Chain, I'm sure. Like, we're already seeing that to a certain extent, right? You know Harmon is coping, seething, and molding over the fact that he'll never get to play Elden Ring unless he actually gets out of his Nintendo-shaped bubble and actually gets one of the superior gaming consoles or goes to the PC. Anyways, Harmon, yes, Nintendo has competition. Nintendo will always have competition, and unless Nintendo plans on entering an industry that doesn't exist yet, then they will never be without competition, and even then, that wouldn't last for long. The point is, Harmon, competition is never bad. It's always a good thing. It only becomes bad when fanboys like you come along and pit everything against your own games, and since in your mind you'll automatically side with Nintendo, no matter how bad one of their games may be or how shittily they treat their customers, and against the opposing game, you're gonna hate it anyways, so what difference does it make if Nintendo has competition or not? Well, to you at least. Also, Harmon, Dark Souls isn't competing with the Zelda games, it's Elden Ring that's competing with the Zelda games. And in regards to that one video where you said that Breath of the Wild wasn't inspired by Dark Souls, it pretty clearly was. I mean, compare the combat of the two games side by side and you'd see it, were it not for the fact that you were such a massive Nintendo fanboy that you just refused to see it. If anyone in the gaming industry can't compete, it, then it would be Nintendo, at least in terms of console power. Now don't get me wrong, Nintendo's consoles being underpowered means that Nintendo does put the quality of their games first, and that's a good thing. But the problem also lies with their consoles being underpowered, as it means that you won't get the optimal experience with third-party games. Although I do hear that PC gamers tend to have Nintendo consoles for that reason alone just so that they can play their Nintendo games and get everything else on the PC. Anyways, this isn't about them, this is about you, and you are very clearly salty that Elden Ring did well, and that you were barred from playing it because it isn't available on the Nintendo Switch, which, again, it's because the Switch is so underpowered that From Software would have to cut out a ton of content and downgrade the graphics and the draw distance to an ungodly degree that it just isn't worth it, if, and if the game has to make sacrifices, and the exact same thing goes for all the other third-party game developers out there. One thing that is important to note is that most Nintendo games, in my experience, do seem to be aimed at younger audiences. You know, Mario, Pokemon, Animal Crossing, 
There are some games out there that are meant for older gaming audiences on Nintendo consoles, such as Fire Emblem, some of the Legend of Zelda games, but for the most part, yeah, Nintendo is a company geared towards younger gamers, in my experience. That's how I feel about it. Anyway. Now, I've heard of people comparing Bayonetta to Devil May Cry, but I've never played either one of them, and you should know the one rule I follow religiously by now, so we'll move on to a point that I can talk about. Harmon must have a speech impediment, or he's autistic, or both possibly, because I have never once heard the title of Devil May Cry pronounced Devil May Cry. I've always heard it pronounced Devil May Cry. And it isn't just Devil May Cry he does it with either. He's even mispronounced Nintendo game titles as well. For example, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. He pronounces majority as majority, and the list goes on. You know, I've already seen people, like, try to say that, like, you know, the, the, um, the original Resident Evil remake is, like, better than Luigi's Mansion, and, and use that to, like, <laughs> weaponize against Nintendo. So it's not outside the realm of possibility that we, we could, like, compare completely different genres of games in order to, like, present a narrative, but... The only one I see trying to present a narrative here is you, little boy. Resident Evil and Luigi's Mansion are both horror games. They both take place in a mansion. Both require the main character to survive by not being killed, or whatever, by said mansion's undead inhabitants. So apart from how each game has you deal with the threats, in what ways are they different? Honestly, to me at least, it sounds like Harmon is still salty about the Resident Evil 4 remake not coming to the Switch. Harmon, if you want to play more third-party games, you're going to have to swap over to a more powerful console or go to PC. If you cannot be bothered to do that, then you need to keep your head down and your mouth shut, constantly whining about wanting to play games that aren't coming to your console of choice on YouTube isn't going to make the developers and or publishers any more inclined to bring the games to those platforms. If your game must make sacrifices to be playable on the Switch, then it isn't going to be worth it porting to a console that lacks power. How is this that hard to understand? Um, the thing is, right now, with Kojima out of the picture, with, uh, you know, the big golden child, Hideo Kojima, you know, uh, being retired from games and not making anything else, we'll get no more Metal Gear Solid games, no more new IPs, nothing from him. Death Stranding is a failure. Uh, people are, like, desperately trying to find the new thing to get excited about. And right now, it seems like the narrative seems to be shifting towards hyping up Miyazaki and hyping up Itsuno, you know, the From Software and the Devil May Cry guy as, uh, you know, viable, relevant competitors to Nintendo. These are the guys that are going to lead the, the next generation against Nintendo. These are the guys who are going to produce, like, the next generation of, like, Nintendo destroying software. Dragon's Dogma 2, Devil May Cry 5, uh, Elden Ring. Like, you know, even now you're seeing a lot of people saying the DLC for Elden Ring is uh, going to be better than Tears of the Kingdom, which is uh, laughable in and of itself. But let's review that, Harmon. Elden Ring is fresh, new, and exciting in that it brings the difficulty of Dark Souls to an open world format that has a ton of content to do, and the side quests feel varied and refreshing. The DLC for Elden Ring will bring in more success for Elden Ring and from software. Tears of the Kingdom, as I understand it, literally is DLC to Breath of the Wild, or at least it was supposed to be, and this shows because the game reuses a lot of stuff from Breath of the Wild. I mean a lot of stuff from Breath of the Wild. Elden Ring's assets are fresh and newly created, specifically for it. Tears of the Kingdom is basically a gigantic asset flip. Now, none of this is to say that Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom is bad, I certainly don't care for them, but if you like them, that's fine. I'll, I will respect your opinion 100%. But please don't tell me that Elden Ring can't compete with Nintendo, because not only does Elden Ring compete with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, it completely blows them out of the water. As for Kojima retiring from video games, he isn't. Kojima said that he would continue to create games for as long as he lived. He said he was encouraged to retire, after leaving Konami. I know research is kryptonite to fanboys, Harmon, but do try to do some from time to time. For God's sake, man. It is, uh, it's absurd, you know, like seeing just the lengths that people are going to, to try and uh, push this narrative that, that Nintendo is just 
can't compete with these guys. You know, it doesn't ever end. That would be because you won't stop bringing this up, numb nuts. You know, every every generation or so, we see new IPs introduced. They're hyped up. They fall. Nintendo beats them. And we have new ones take their place. You know, I, I would argue that, like, uh, From Software is already in their downward spiral. They have been, like, you know, eventually people are going to get tired of the Elden Ring formula. They're Just like they got tired of the Dark Souls one and the, the second. Like, you know, there have already, already been signs that, like, From Software can't really innovate or do anything new with their IPs. So, Dude, Elden Ring has sold over 20 million units alone. Dark Souls 1 sold over 5 million copies. Demon Souls sold over a million copies, and Bloodborne sold over 2 million copies. Dark Souls 2 sold over 2.5 million copies. Sekiro sold over 5 million copies. Dark Souls 3 sold 10 million copies. I would say that From Software is doing very well, especially when you factor in that Elden Ring is, again, getting DLC made for it. Also, you say no other company can compete with Nintendo, well, if that's true, then why are all these other game companies still around? If they just can't compete with Nintendo, then wouldn't they have shut down by now? But they haven't, so yeah, they can clearly compete with Nintendo. Another thing to consider is just how underpowered the Switch is compared to other gaming consoles, and the PC just demolishes the Switch. Wanna try that one again, Harmon? Uh, again, from software is already on the way out. You know, I'm sure it's you know is already on the way out, but like it's just what are they gonna hype up next? Like, you know, so many people like who even remembers like Pragmata? You know, I've seen people on like 4chan bring up like, ooh, Pragmata, like who who cares? You know, like, oh, Monster Hunter World 2 is gonna destroy you because it's not on Nintendo. Like, it won't be on Nintendo because Capcom was gonna treat this like a real Monster Hunter game. If there is indeed a Monster Hunter World 2 in development, Harmon, it won't be coming to the Switch because the Switch literally will not be able to handle it. It's that simple, mate. Like, you have, you know, it's a dying narrative. It really is. It's gotten, like, so much... It's become really diminished over the, the past several decades, but the, the past few decades, but it is still very much prevalent. And I, as a creator, as a content creator, as a uh, fan of Nintendo, like, I, I just can't stand for it. You know, I can't respect how these people people <laughs> constantly try and and pretend as if there's like anything these no-name companies developers franchises can do to destroy nintendo and harman clearly needs to see a therapist because he's been listening to the voices in his head again just like always clearly therapy exists because of people like harman those voices must be getting louder and clearer because he now thinks non-nintendo fans aren't even people or maybe those people that he says aren't people are the voices in his head Harmon, if the voices in your head are telling you that people are out to destroy Nintendo, then I think that you might need to lay off of taking Cody Lee's crazy pills because there is clearly something wrong with you. You know, like, uh, I've seen so many videos talking about Bandana 3, Astral Train, uh, those, uh, how those games are infinitely flawed compared to, like, the perfection of Elden Ring and Devil May Cry 5, and it's, it's really not going to stick. I would argue it hasn't stick. I think Astral Train has actually left more of an impact than a lot of people are willing to admit. Like, Bayonetta 3 was a lot better than I thought it was going to be, right? You know, I, I think uh, the, the Devil May Cry's days are numbered, and people don't want to admit it. They are still in this phase of worshipping these creators, worshipping the ground they walk on in the hopes that someday their savior will come and destroy Nintendo. And... It simply is never going to happen. Wow, so he just ends the video like that, huh? Typical Harmon Smith. Also, Harmon, way to project there, buddy, telling the people who like Elden Ring that we worship from software when you yourself worship Nintendo as if it was the second coming of Christ. Also, again, can you point me to the people who have been saying that from software and Capcom were out to destroy Nintendo? Or is it as I thought? And those were just the voices in your head telling you these things. Ah, uh, who cares? He's gonna make another video in a few days talking crap about Elden Ring or something else that's doing well that isn't on Nintendo or made by Nintendo. You know, it sounds like Harmon is... You are coping, coping and seething. You just can't accept what you're seeing. Yes, you're 
coping, coping and seeing the truth that is scalding, and now you are molding and coping, coping so hard. Anyways, much like Quantum TV, Elden Ring lives rent-free in Harmon's head, only for a different reason. Harmon clearly wants to play Elden Ring, but since it isn't on his beloved little Nintendo Switch and he absolutely refuses to go to PC or other consoles, that means he can't, so he shills for Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom as a coping mechanism. With that being said, I will see you all in the next video. So until then, bye bye for now!